To anyone who knows Plymouth, the Civic Centre is an iconic building. Opened in 1962, it's situated on Amada Way in Abercrombie and Patton Watson's plan of Plymouth. Designed by the architect Hector Sterling, the Civic Centre has been described by locals as the Marmite of modern architecture. Both loved or hated from its outset, its future uses have been endlessly debated. As an important piece of Plymouth's post-war architectural heritage, how can its regeneration be socially and environmentally sustainable to the people of Plymouth? After the Blitz, the American-born benefactor and Lord Mayor of Plymouth from 1939 to 1944, Lord Waldorf Astor, set out to create a new optimistic town plan for the city. To design that plan, he chose the trained architect, professor and English town planner, Sir Leslie Patrick Abercrombie, on the left. In collaboration with the engineer and surveyor, James Patton Watson, Abercrombie created the Plan for Plymouth, an ambitious scheme designed to raise Plymouth out of the rubble and turn it into a 21st century city. Based on the Beaux-Arts city beautiful style, its most distinct feature was a long boulevard called Amada Way, with a civic centre, but not yet a civic tower, for public promenading and gathering. The design of some of the individual buildings in the plan of Plymouth were initially developed by the Scott and Plymouth Council architect from 1960 to 1970, Hector Sterling. Inspired by the New York corporate office tower, the Lever House, completed in 1952, Plymouth Civic Centre brought together all the city's municipal departments in one modern 14-storey iconic form. The Civic Centre was designed to join the adjacent Council House, which housed the Council Chambers, an acoustically democratic space in which every speaker was no further than 35 feet from the Mayor, so their voice could be heard. Council House was inspired by Scandinavian design, in particular the work of Arne Jakobsen. Building work started in 1957 and the people of Plymouth watched on expectantly as scaffolding went up and modernist buildings began to appear. An ambitious project built for the cost of just under £1.55 million in 1962 it was opened by Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip in July of that year. Do you like it? Yes, it's quite an attractive place. Why? Why do you like it? Well, it's uh, roomy, I suppose. It you know, stands up and it's got plenty of... Uh, I like the top. You know, it's sort of different from any other place. Uh, I'd like to go up one of the cafe, you know, and get a good view from up there. Oh, I think it's very nice indeed, very smart. Not an idea, but some people don't like what I do. I think it'll go down with the... Yes, I think so in the end. I mean, we're not used to that sort of thing in Plymouth, really. Now, if I was in London, I shouldn't think they'd take any notice of it, but down here they do. I think it's, uh, it's rather too large. Uh, I don't really see the point of having such a, a very large building, but I think it's quite attractive and fits in quite well with the new Plymouth. Well, we came to talk, came over from Torquay to see the, the new building, and we think it's a, a very wonderful place. And when we arrived, we thought we'd like to take a meal at the restaurant. Its rooftop restaurant offered every class and socio-economic group the opportunity to enjoy the view of the new rebuilt city. While the Civic Centre provided a backdrop and photo opportunity for cultural celebrations, or celebrities like Eddie the Eagle, who visited in 1988. What I can see is a bit misty. It's a bit messy. What's all this mess? <laughs> Something we've got to put up with down in yeah, the southwest. Yeah, no, well, this is, a, this is why it was a bit difficult, you see, I couldn't land. The tower began to deteriorate due to weathering and lack of ongoing maintenance. Yeah, yeah. I don't like heights. I don't like heights either. Cleaning of the vast expanse of windows 
in the Modernist Tower by local celebrity Judy Spires showed the problems associated with a local council maintaining a glass building. That sort of thing on and off. <laughs> there, so I'll just you? hold you in a bit, let's see. Have you ever caught people out in here doing things they shouldn't be doing? Well, once or twice, like. In June 2007, English Heritage listed the council house and civic centre as Grade 2. Grade 2 listing meant the buildings could not be demolished and needed to be preserved regardless of public opinion. As a consequence, the council began to move its offices out of the civic centre and look to sell it. By 2015, they'd vacated the building and it was boarded up. Urban Splash, the private property developer recognised for their urban regeneration projects such as Royal William Yard, bought the Civic Centre for a nominal £1 sum from Plymouth City Council in January 2016. Their ambition is to use the Civic Centre as a catalyst to revitalise Plymouth City by delivering flexible co-living residential accommodation and event spaces to kickstart a renaissance for the high street. I think it is an eyesore. If it was being used for something, then that would be one thing, but it's because it's vacant, it's just a waste of space. I think if they turn it into residential and event space, that would be really good for the beneficial for the bottom half of town, because the bottom yeah. half of town is just dying. I used to work there and I don't quite understand why the council dumped it. Well, yeah, it's, just, it's, an, it's an office block. Do it again. And it, and it worked very well. And then have it as like housing, like homeless or social and a lot of community-based stuff to help uh, people that are struggling. And my dad, he used to skate here before me. Like I've been brought up here, if you know what I mean. Like there's always skate parks you can go to. However, this here has like the best spot. It's like nice, smooth, and it's got like it's got, what's the word, it's got a story to it. We all love it, like, it's Civic. Oh, it's like, you take a picture of Civic before you skate it. It's just like, to show that you're here. It's like a, a monument. It's a home where all the skaters could come and be themselves. Wait, let me ask you, what do you think of that building behind you? The big yeah. one. It's very big. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> this amazing building has always intrigued the people of Plymouth. Its location at the heart of the city was about providing opportunities for local people. If we're to honour Abercrombie and Patton Watson and Sterling's visions of Plymouth, we need to put the Civic back into the Civic Centre. <laughs>